Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where I will be reacting to Louder Than Crowder's um, take on men would rather be alone than to get married to women. Um, I am just going to listen to him and see whether or not I agree or disagree um, and you know, whatever along the way. Okay, so without further ado, let's get to it. Let me interrupt your <laughs> flow of thought. Okay, let me get to this here. <laughs> this is a new, uh, some, uh, this came out uh, August 10th, Psychology Today. Became another outlet reporting on what's been defined as male loneliness. Oh, so Dr. Sweetest. Matos. Uh, so it says, the rise of lonely single men dating apps and a drastically changing relationship landscape. All the lonely people are men. A fifth have no friends. Hey, I'm kind of deaf definitely there. Younger and middle-aged men are the loneliest they've ever been in generations. It's probably going to get worse why men are lonelier in America than elsewhere. Marrying lately, marrying later, working harder, and being better parents have diminished male friendships, male loneliness, the time bomb that's killing men. Uh, wrote. Men are the loneliest they've ever been in generations, and it's probably getting worse. Okay, let's see. It says, the younger middle-aged men are the loneliest they've ever been in generations, and it's probably going to get worse. This is not my typical rosy view of relationships, but a reality nonetheless. Over the last 30 years, men have become a larger portion of that growing group of long-term single people. And while you don't actually need to be in a relationship to be happy, men to are happier and healthier when partnered. I would have to agree. And this talks about how many men are alone. Um, of course, the complications that come with that being unhappy. Not all women. I'm going to speak right now in some generalizations, just to be clear. This does not mean all women, and this does not mean all men. And again, I've been watching the show alone. Obsessed with it. By the way, spoiler alert. I know I'm late to this, but I went back and watched season six. Mm -hmm. One of the guys killed... Spoiler. Kills a Wolverine with a hatchet. The same season, some dumb broad leaves because she was constipated. <laughs> you should poop more than every 14 days. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Why well, are you in the ICU? Eat. Oh, my Barbara hasn't taken a good shit in four days. I've had a nickel for every time my doctor told me that. Science. I've done more than that in college. <laughs> <laughs> on a dare. It, it is funny when you watch it because you'll see. And by the way, there's some awesome women on the show alone. But it's like yeah. a, it's like a one to five ratio for awesome women to completely inept women. Uh, and <laughs> it's <laughs> essentially true. Like one woman cuts herself. She lights herself on fire. She gets bitten by a squirrel. And the guy is killing a wolverine with a hatchet. That sounds like a really cool show. A really cool but disturbing show. <laughs> Okay. After killing a moose. Because it is predominantly a male-dominated space, survivalism, let's be clear. Not all men, not all women, but here's something that I noticed watching it. Uh, sure, the women, women are often more, on a pragmatic level, completely inept. But the men get homesick much more quickly. And you can comment below men out there and women if you've noticed that in your relationship. It's pretty common. This is something that statistically, I don't have all of the references available right now. Um, we can probably put them up on the website because some of this I'm going by rote. But men often remarry more soon than women when they get divorced. Widowers tend to die more soon after they lose their spouse. You know, I will say this. Um, like, my, I guess the person who I call mom, and, the people who I call mom and dad, they're my surrogate parents after my parents passed away. And I will tell you this, when I'm on the phone with my dad and my mom goes out and she's been gone for a little bit, whether that, she, whether that means she's going to church to, you know, be with the girls or go out with the girls and have a um, manicure, pedicure day, or when she's just going out and picking up fresh vegetables, um, not vegetables, but more like fresh fruit from the the local growers like i can hear my dad <laughs> say oh, you know you know my mom's been gone a long time um she's you know he he gets really worried that she's been gone for a long time <laughs> she's been gone for a while and i can even hear him go to the door to like open <laughs> to see if she's going to be driving down the street i think it's adorable to be honest uh, you know they're old they're in their you know 60s late 60s so i find it adorable to be honest uh spouse quicker i'm watching Selter. <laughs> more quickly spouse uh after uh their their wife dies and here's why 
And I want to be clear about something because a lot of young men, record number of men, they don't want to get married. And a lot of women are upset by that. Um, but at a certain point, you do need to accept some culpability, some responsibility. And I'm going to get to what men need to do as well. But here's the thing. I've never seen a pastor in a church call women to the mat. No one's doing it because women get upset about it. Men are constantly called to the mat. We are constantly told what we need to be as a man, what we need to be as a provider, as a good father. I mean, you think about even at my church on Mother's Day, right? The women get flowers and you know, they have the kids go up and pay and you donate. So you send them flowers and then the man gets a paper mache hat like he's a French <laughs> clown from Sunday school. It's like a bird feeder made out of popsicle sticks and toxic glue. Thank you. The point is men are constantly being browbeaten and the questions of, well, hold on a second. Women, what role do you think you play in the reason that men don't want to get married? Now, let me go back to men get homesick more quickly. Let me explain to you why that is, at least why I think it is. Um, men love their women, just to be clear. Women, this is also a part of the problem. It's an emotional and spiritual void that men often are seeking to fill with women rather than a practical one. That doesn't mean that there's no emotional void or spiritual void being filled uh, for women by men. I'm not saying that. But there are, generally speaking, more practical reasons for a woman to seek out a mate and a man. True. We reduce it back to its most. True, 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 true. Um, most women, in my opinion, I don't think seek out partners who, you know, make less than them. Um, and, and this, yes, this is me generalizing. Most women, not, you know, the few that like myself, I might not need a guy who makes as much money as I do. And I've been fully aware of that, but why I chose to pursue my career was mostly out of fear, you know, from being a foster care and being alone. But it wasn't because it was, um, well, mainly for security. That's the reason why I chose computer science was because of security. Um, and that was a pitfall. That was like my backup plan just in case, you know, I don't, uh, you know, meet a guy, but that was never because I set on down that path because I didn't need a man or want a man. Like, no, I just, just like science and that's something I just gravitated towards. But when I hear, when I hear what he, he just said, um, I a hundred percent believe that women, um, would choose mates who they know would, uh, not only protect but provide for them and if their big accounts aren't showing if the bread isn't coming in nine times out of ten they will not want to date that guy like period most basic times nomadic tribesmen which you see in a program like alone men don't really need a woman they want a woman look at adam and eve let's just say you don't believe okay fine i do but let's just say you think it's an archetype. Let's just say you think it's a parable. Okay, fine. An Aesop fable, if you will. Adam existed Aesop alone. And God uh -huh. said, for man to be alone is not good. So he gave him woman to compliment him, to complete him. Woman never existed without man. Now, let's look at the divorce stats. 80%. The most recent number is 80%. The lowest you'll find historically is 66% of divorces are filed by women. Let's split the difference, call it 70, 75%. That means three quarters of divorces in this country are filed by women, not by men. By the way, less than 30 of those when women are being uh, polled cite infidelity or abuse. Infidelity or abuse have gone down. Women file for divorce at higher rates. Why aren't men? It's the same reason that men get homesick more quickly. They're looking to fill an emotional, a spiritual void with a woman where sometimes a man can be chewed up, spit out because he's fulfilled his practical purpose. They don't need a woman, most men, but we yearn for one. We yearn for one. This is why you see more gold digging females than males. Doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but far more women will marry a man, use the resources and leave him. This is what I think we're dealing with here. He ain't wrong about that. He is not, I, I, not saying that this is all women, not saying that, but <sighs> women, they have a couple kids, think they're good. And you know, some women will just get pregnant so they can have someone who they can depend on if they decide to leave and they want to make sure they can take care of their kids or have a steady paycheck or some sort of income coming in. They will do, they will do these 
go towards the, go to these lengths. It's, it's ridiculous. And when you think about it, think about this, think about it like this. Cause I saw a lot of this when I was in foster care. So how many girls by the time they were 18 or when they turned 18 immediately got pregnant. And it wasn't because, um, they, their, their mindset was like, well, I want someone to love. Um, I want something to love, but I know I don't have the financial means to, to actually nourish and grow this child in a, a very comfortable and safe place. A lot of them went directly, directly towards welfare because they knew that if they couldn't get a man who was, you know, of stature, who had money, they knew they can depend directly on the government. That's practical. That's pra like, if you look at it in, in the sense of terms, it's practical. They went to have a kid by, for practical means, basically to survive, which is insane when I hear women say, oh, we don't need men to survive. Are you insane? <sighs> really? If you don't need men to survive and you, you can't survive on your own, then why are you getting welfare? Why? Hmm? Maybe it's because you do, you do in some sense feel that you will not feel, you know, that money is what you need to survive. And if you can't get it from a man, well, there's your safety net that you just keep abusing. And all of the dynamics, which we have claimed to be archaic and patriarchal and are actually beautiful, understanding the premise that men love their women, that they yearn for them, that they get more homesick. They miss their women often more than the women miss their men. Understanding that it comes from a, a place of love. Let's also distill this a little bit. Take away uh, divorce laws. Take away modern conveniences. We'll reduce it to nomadic tribesmen. Okay. What would a man need to do back then in order to attract a woman? That's the question. Women control access to sex. Men control access to relationships. And then the question for a woman is, what would a woman need to do back then, without the modern conveniences and court system, what would a woman need to do to keep a man? That's the dance. A man needs to prove himself to a woman as a suitable mate. Look at Native American tribes. Look at every society since the beginning of ever. Look at the animal kingdom. Peacock. For crying out loud. <laughs> the black widow male needs to prove himself suitable and he knows the bitch is going to eat him. <laughs> <laughs> a Worth man it. needs to prove himself worthy of being a mate for a woman uh, by largely being a suitable protector and provider. Okay? That's what he needs to prove. Which, by the way, men, to hold you accountable, this is why there were no men who were procreating eating Cheeto jerky in mom's teepee, <laughs> right? You do have to be a provider and protector. You can't be a deadbeat, so you're not off the hook there either. Now, the proving process for women, though it may not seem fair because it's longer, uh -huh. is the keeping of a mate. Because ironically, once a man proves himself to be a worthy mate, he's now more desirable to other women. So the question is, how does a man attract a woman this is the dance. This is the relationship dance. How does a woman keep a man? Because he can go from teepee to teepee like Little Bear. How does she keep a man? Love, kindness, warmth, loyalty. It's an emotional currency, men, you can comment below, that we value. And most men, not all, I'm speaking in some generalizations, will stay with a woman who exhibits those qualities. Again, men desperately want a woman this is why they get homesick, the men who love their wives. This is why they yearn. This is why they, get, they die when their wives die very soon after. It's why they remarry soon after they get divorced. Oh. Did you guys not hear about that, um, the Evaldi where the teacher, that the woman that died and then the man, you know, he wasn't involved in the shooting, but he died soon afterwards too. It's like, yo, know, there's so many incidents in society where that has happened, where when the woman dies, and um, the spouse, you know, the female obviously dies and uh, the men, they soon follow suit. I do think there is a bond there that happens on, I don't know whether it's a molecular level or, you know, emotional level, I don't know, but it seems like it's even like, like in our bodies, like we feel like a piece of it is dying. And so we, we can't really cope. I don't know, maybe our body can't cope, our mind can't cope something, but I always found that to be very intriguing. I wish some scientific study was done behind it. Like, um, you know, why? Why does that tend to happen?
often losing their shirt in the process. They desperately want a woman and a wife. The problem is we have a record number of females who have no interest in being either of those. So, like I just said, if a man needed to prove himself to uh, a mate back then, he couldn't just be sitting there eating jerky in his mom's uh, basement TV. Okay. Take away the divorce laws. Take away the modern conveniences. Again, women, you have to accept men aren't marrying you. Mm -hmm. And men are, they're unhappy because of it. They're unhappy because they're alone, but they're alone because of you. Because if you get rid of these modern conveniences and the very unfair divorce laws that men have discussed, where you forfeit your rights as a father, this happens a lot. You can go watch other people on YouTube who specialize in this. You know what a woman never did? If she knew that her husband could leave for the winter and maybe not come back, and she couldn't sue him, take all his stuff, she didn't yell. She wouldn't nag. She wouldn't manipulate. For the same reason that if you reduce modern conveniences to nomadic tribesmen, and I'm glad that we're better than that and we've advanced, I'm just using this as a thought experiment, for that same reason, the man who provides nothing, who fights for nothing, would never find himself a mate. It all stems from a deep, deep love that men have for women and a place of yearning for that woman. Let's get rid of the modern conveniences. Let's get rid of all the laws. Let's get rid of all of these attempts at social engineering. It's two questions. What would a man need to do or what does a man need to do to get a woman to prove himself suitable and what does a woman need to do to keep a man? That's the natural order of things. I'll tell you one thing to you on that. I agree 100%. Because, okay, hypothetically, what did a natural disaster happen that wiped, I don't know. Okay, how do I say this? How do I say this? What if a natural disaster, have anyone ever seen a um, total impact or anything? I think it was total impact, but you know, basically this, asteroid came down it was going to cause like a extension level event and the waves were came up and washed away everybody and all this other stuff you know what do you think happens when something like that well if something that like that were to occur do you think women will still be feminist well the feminist women that are today are of today do you still think they'll be like Oh my God, we don't need men. No, they're just, you know, they just like, they just destroy everything. They're good for nothing. They just never do anything. It's just so, no, 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 no. I'll tell you one thing. Smart women, smart women would immediately find the first guy who they know through their long list of, you know, single guys who they know are the strongest who they know they could rely on to survive. This is instinctual. This is not something that's made up because at the end of the day, it will be men with their strength that will, like, that will ferry you to, um, to safety. They will. Yeah, I'm not saying that. There won't be a few women along the way to give you pointers, but look look at every single horror movie out there where where it was some sort of you know the world is ending there's a reason why you have men there at the forefront trying to keep everyone calm trying to help not only just you know feeble men but the women and children mostly most women they will just grab you know their children only be worried about themselves, right? And their 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 um, loved ones. Whereas men, a lot of them will, you know, will just be the ones that will be directing people or directing the crowd to wherever they need to go to safety, basically. So I don't believe in like not having gender roles that's stupid it's asinine and i will i will definitely say this i don't like yes on the level of human rights and stuff like that men and women are equal but when it comes to our physical our 
and it's just our physical ability, our emotional ability. Um, we, we are just different people in general. We don't have the same equal abilities. And I think that's when, when people hear the whole term, uh, men and women aren't equal. Oh my God. Like their, <laughs> their critical thinking skills just go out the window. They don't read between the lines. And basically men and women are not created equal. They're not. Look at the word create. That is different from just basic rights. Like words and semantics here. When men and women are not created equal. However, they are as individuals equal under the law or equal in society when it comes to, you know, human rights. And I think that seriously needs to be stressed because if we don't, you know, I, I think this imbalance will actually harm, you know, society. I really do. Um, and it will, and in my sense, my, why I believe it will harm societies because men will feel like they're just being beat up all the time. They'll, they will end up being de basic, demas well, uh, I, I guess um, emasculated. Yeah, they'll be emasculated. They wouldn't want to help you. They would want to just say to themselves, you're like, we're literally pushing them away. And no matter how you look at it, all, all the things that we have in our society, they're built by men and it's mainly to make our lives easier. I don't, I don't know how anyone can just sit there and not think about this. Think about everything. We have more equal rights here in America than any other country on the world. Maybe, you know, I guess when it comes to your choice of choosing what you want to do with your life, but yet you don't see women doing construction. You don't see women in these dangerous, you know, jobs, gross jobs that still need to be done, but yet men get shit upon. And it's like, man, I don't ever thought I was, I don't ever, I don't think I've ever thought this way about society in general until, um, recently when, you know, the bashing of men <laughs> started to become popular. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, nah, uh, I can't get on board with that. And, you know, being an engineer or a computer scientist myself, I know what that field looks like. You can't tell me that it's not men who build the society. Not like, again, general terms, men build societies. And when you hear, well, women never have a chance. Well, you have a chance to now. And like I said, how many bricklay? Well, I should say, like Jordan Peterson said, how many bricklayers do you see that are women? How many dumpster drivers do you see are women? I mean, for crying out loud, y'all don't even want to take out the trash. Was that not a gender role? But hey. That is Lana with Crowder. 100% agree. I love his show. He makes me laugh all the time. Well, everyone on that show makes me laugh all the time. Um, but this episode was yesterday's episode. So if you want to watch it, I'll put the full description or the full link down there and you can go watch it and see um, their guest, which was Carrie Lake. And I am from Florida. I do have. I did live in Arizona for a while before moving here, um, moving to where I am now in St. Um, St. Louis. But um, if I was still in Arizona, ha, Carrie Lake would have definitely got my vote. Definitely. But until next time, have a nice day. Thanks for tuning in.